AI and machine learning are going to change the world in some pretty substantial ways this decade. So what exactly do these things look like in the year 2020? Keep watching and we'll discuss. I'm Richard and this is Richard on Data. Alright, as hard as it might be to believe, we are already halfway through 2020. There's been a ton that's already happened this year. We have a disease that's made its way around virtually every country around the globe, and we have a resulting economic recession that's going to be affecting tons of countries all around the world. Now, people had been speculating towards the end of last decade that this was going to be the decade of AI. And with it came a very reasonable concern that automation would replace tens of thousands of jobs. And since everything that's happened, it's really worth trying to understand as best as possible where AI and machine learning are today. So there's this company called Appen that just put out a white paper on where AI stands in the year 2020. And they're an Australian company that sells a variety of machine learning and artificial intelligence products and services. And they do an annual report on the state of AI and machine learning. This year it was based on a survey of 374 respondents in April and May of this year. So you can be sure that these findings are pretty well up to date. The link to this white paper is publicly available and I'll have a link to it in the description of this video. So I thought it'd be fun to step through some of their key findings and to give my thoughts on where we are and what the future holds. I think there are some pretty interesting findings here, regardless of whether you're a current or aspiring data scientist or just somebody who's generally interested on in where the field is going. And they have findings on how much people are budgeting for AI, the types of tools and frameworks that people are using, the types of issues and bottlenecks that the organizations are running into, the types of data that people are working with, and then the extent to which the virus that's going around right now is affecting AI in general. Before I get into all this fun stuff, please take a moment and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, and then also take one second of your time and smash the like button. That really helps my content reach a larger audience. And also, I'll have a link to my Patreon account in the description of this video. If you'd like to support me that way, it would be enormously appreciated as well. So one thing that's important to see here, which I'm actually going to start off with, was the methodology. So their sample size was 374, and more than half of those people were directors or VPs or generally people who are in very high standings in their organizations. So we have a margin of error of about 5%, and most of these people come from organizations with at least 1,000 people, just to give you some idea of where all this information is coming from. And all in all, this is not the highest sample size in the world, but it seems like it should be a fairly representative picture of industries at large. And then for starters, we've got three out of four organizations claiming that AI is critical to their business. And when they say that, I do have to wonder how many of them do specifically mean AI as opposed to just data science in general. But regardless, it's clear that the enthusiasm that you would expect is indeed there. But then you've got roughly half of people saying that their company is behind as far as adoption of AI is concerned, and the other half saying that they're not. So that's pretty interesting. This one just seems to come down to people's self-perception about their own organization more than anything. So this one is a bit tough to make heads or tails of. I do tend to think that most people who are at the level of directors or VPs are fairly well educated on what's going on in the industry as a whole. But it could be that people are underestimating their organization. It could be that they're overestimating it. It's very tough to say. Regardless, it does seem that people are putting their money where their mouth is as far as their interest in AI is concerned. Because we've got 2019 and 2020 numbers here, and we see that the percentage of people saying that they've already allocated greater than $5 million for AI has doubled since last year. And I get it, last year had a smaller sample size of 251, and also 26% of people in 2020 said they're unsure how much they're allocating for AI, as opposed to 0% in 2019, so that's pretty weird. And that tells me that at least some of those people are allocating more than $5 million though, meaning the real percentage of people who are spending more than $5 million for AI this year is probably way higher than 8%. 
And that's great news for data science workers because part of the budget that these companies are talking about is going to have to go to hiring people. That means you're gonna have a nice supply of jobs out there for data scientists and for AI experts. And because these companies are competing with each other, that's gonna push wages nice and high. Now this next one is pretty fascinating. This next question is about data science and machine learning tools with a specific focus on cloud technologies. And Microsoft Azure is the runaway leader here. You had Google Cloud squeaking it out last year over AWS, which is in fourth place this time around. But what's also pretty interesting is that all of these are way up from the previous year. So pretty clearly, you have a lot of data solutions which are strongly moving into the cloud. Then they move on next to programming languages that people are using for their AI initiatives and projects. And there's a lot to break down with this one. Now, first of all, if you look at R in the middle of the list, it's way down from 2019. And that's not surprising. I have a video all about R versus Python in 2020. I'll have it linked in the description and as a card up above if anyone's not seen that one yet. But that's consistent with the findings that you're getting in a lot of other places. But what surprised me here is that even Python is down. And meanwhile, you've got languages like Java and C and C++ going up enormously. And it really looks like people are prototyping and moving their solutions into production all within the same language. And granted, Python is still the leader here. My guess is that Java, C, and C++ are gaining so much steam here for speed and for performance reasons. Now what they don't get into here is how much of the work in these AI initiatives and projects is coming from data scientists as opposed to people with the job title of data engineer or machine learning engineer. These findings are fairly consistent with data science specific findings though. Now this is older, it's from 2017 to 2019 data from an analysis that was done at the KD Nuggets blog. Those of you who have watched my R versus Python video have seen this one, but on the Y axis is the technology and on the X axis is the number of jobs listing that technology based on Indeed data and it is data science specific. Now Python was once again the runaway leader but notice that R is actually under Java and it's barely higher than the C and C++ and C Sharp Collective. So are we moving into a period where knowing those languages is critically important for people trying to break into data science? Possibly. It's not totally clear quite yet. And honestly, I wouldn't worry about it too much if you know one of R or Python and you know it really well. So this next question asks companies what their biggest bottleneck or barrier to AI is. And my understanding here is they could only select one. So this truly is supposed to be their single biggest obstacle. And the fact that 41% of people say that it's over lack of data or data management doesn't surprise me at all. In fact, if anything, I'm surprised it's not even higher than that. After all, real world data is often crap. Anyone who's worked as a data professional for any time can tell you that. But the fact the number one bottleneck that people are facing is lack of technical resources or qualified people is a pretty fascinating piece of information. Now often when people use the word resources, they're actually referring to people. So the way this answer is worded could be open to interpretation. But I honestly don't really know what to make of this one. It could be the case that companies don't have enough people to get their projects to where they want them to be. It could also be that they're hiring people who have the wrong skill set. You sort of have to tie this one to the other side of the equation though, because there's tons of surveys out there and even Medium articles that data scientists have written where they say they've quit their jobs because they don't have all the tools that they need to be successful or their company expects them to be the go-to person for all things data in their organization. And that's obviously a totally unfair and unrealistic place to put somebody in. So things like that might actually be the real issue here. So I really don't know, and I wanna know what you guys think. I really do think that we need more information here before we draw too strong of a conclusion. Next one is on what kinds of data people are working with. And the one that's highest here is text. That's not particularly surprising to me at least. 
and it also really illustrates how important a natural language processing skill set can be. Sensor data has gone up a lot over the last year, which tells me that the idea of collecting an enormous amount of live data is becoming more and more prevalent. And probably related to this is the fact that audio and video data are up massively from last year. Now those ones are a little more surprising to me, and I'd honestly want to understand how much of people's time they're actually spending on data that are coming from those sorts of mediums. Then time series seems to be down a little bit, to a level less than what I'd expect, but still at over 40% of organizations reporting that they're working on that type of data. And then of course we have the impact of the disease that happens to be spreading throughout the world at the moment. Now for the YouTube algorithm, I have to censor the word and not explicitly say it out loud, but I'm sure you all know what I'm talking about here. And luckily, only 31% of organizations are reporting that it's delaying their AI strategy, and 35% are reporting that it's impacting their ability to deploy their AI project. Now I have to admit, that's a much more optimistic reporting than I would have expected. In fact, in both of these cases, more people are reporting that it accelerated their strategy and projects rather than delaying them. So for a lot of data scientists and AI professionals, this disease may have sort of been a good thing, from a purely professional standpoint at least. So that's a lot of information, and the last thing that I want anyone to do is come away with this thinking about how little they actually know. Maybe you're looking at this thinking you don't know Java, or you've never worked with cloud platforms before, you've never used sensor data before, so now you just feel kind of dumb. Do not feel this way. As I've stressed countless times on this channel, machine learning and AI are only one piece of the puzzle that is data science. There's tons and tons to this field. Hopefully you just got an inspiration to find one skill or experience on here that you're interested in and explore opportunities within your company to work on that thing. In my book, that's a good thing. But one thing that's clear to me is that AI and data science are becoming super important for organizations all across the map. It's also clear to me that things do change very rapidly and that companies are being agile and when something's not working for them, they try different approaches. It also seems clear to me that for a ton of organizations, it's not enough just to prototype a model one time in R and then glean insights from it that run stale after just a few months. It's increasingly important to be able to deploy your model into production and it's running off of live data. That way insights are relevant to the time at hand. But I think this is full of positives for current or aspiring data scientists. Interest in the field remains extremely high, and that has not changed in light of the economic situation that's been created by the disease. So in 2020, it is still an extremely good year to be a data scientist or an AI professional. So thanks for watching this video. Now if you enjoyed it and you'd like to support my work, please consider sharing this video. Otherwise, at least hit the like button, and then also let me know in the comments down below how you feel about the current state of AI and machine learning in 2020. I'd love to hear from you guys. Then I'll see you all in the not-so-distant future. Until then, Richard, on data.